Hey everybody, Carl Schroof here from Snorkel.tv and today I'm really excited to get you into our first getting started video where we're going to talk about the Animate CC interface. Before we get into you know, actually doing animations, I have to make sure that you're a little bit familiar with the layout of Animate CC. So I'm going to walk you through creating what we call a workspace so that your tools and panels are going to be in the same place as mine when I'm showing you the videos. So when you go to do lessons and stuff, your environment will be pretty much exactly what you see in my videos. Obviously, if you want to make some customizations, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, you don't even need a file open for this first video. Uh, there'll be information on which file I'm using down below. But uh, for now, just sit back and watch. And uh, when you're done, configure your workspace like me, and we'll be off to the races. So here I have Animate CC open. I have a document open. And I want to show you that the workspace or layout is a bit of a mess, all right? There's all these tools and panels all over the place. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. So for this course, I want you at home to have the same workspace and layout of your panels as what I'm using on my screen when I record, all right? So that way you won't spend a lot of time looking for different things. So first things first, up in the top right here, I can choose between different workspaces, all right? And Adobe says, hey, if you're an animator, this is the workspace you may like to use with the timeline up top, color panel over here. But for this course, I'm going to just stick with the essentials, okay? I'm recording at a resolution of 1280 by 720, so that these videos look good on a wide range of screens, from phones to tablets to desktop. And with this Essentials workspace, it's pretty much exactly how I would use things, with the small exception of I really like to have my tools on the left. So I'm just gonna click right here, and I'm going to drag all the way to the left, and when I see that little blue line, it means that panel is gonna sort of snap into place, all right? I can leave my panel sort of free floating if I like, but I want it to stay in one place over here, and then I'm just going to squish it down. I'm gonna have a lesson on creating your own custom workspace and how to open and expand and move around these panels, because it's a little bit of an art form. But right now, I really wanna focus on getting you guys into animation as quickly as possible. Now that my workspace is set up, let me just play this animation, and you'll see some green circles animating, some text, and it's pretty simple. Now, what I wanna talk about first is the stage, okay? And the stage is this rectangle that we're seeing in the middle of my screen with the black border and the orange background. Now, the stage is used to define the visible area of our animation. Anything outside of that stage is not going to be visible in our final GIF video or HTML5 canvas animation. So I have Herman over here, and you'll see that there are some of these circles that are sort of half on the stage and half off the stage in what we call the pasteboard area. What I'm going to do is a control, test movie, and we'll see this animation in a web browser. All right, and what I want to point out is that you don't see Herman over here to the right. We're just seeing the default white background color of the HTML page, and you'll see that some of these circles are being cut off because half of them are outside of the area defined by the stage. Back in Animate CC, I'm going to go over to the Properties panel, which is going to give us different properties of our stage. Here we can change the width and the height. So if I want all these circles as part of my final viewable animation, I could either type in a new number here, I could just do something like 500, but I also want to show you that this number here is a slider value, so I can slide it back down if I want and do some fine tuning just with my mouse. So now the next time I go to test movie in a browser, you'll see that we're going to see basically the bottom of all those circles there. Okay, so whatever's on the stage is going to be visible in our final document. The next thing I want to talk about is the tools panel. We have a number of tools for selecting and transforming items as well as creating artwork and vector shapes and text. I'll have lessons on most of these tools moving forward, but for now I just want to show you that we're going to be using this black arrow or the selection tool quite a bit to click on things to select them and move them around. And we also have the free transform tool here, which we can use to scale items or rotate them freely. I'm going to hit undo a few times to bring it back to normal. And so I don't need to show you right now how to use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle or the oval tool to create an oval. Again, we'll have lessons on drawing and art manipulation and creating text as we go throughout this course. 
Moving forward, I want to bring our attention now to the timeline at the bottom of my screen. And we're going to be spending a lot of time in the timeline showing you how to read it, how to create animations in the timeline. But basically, the timeline allows us to specify how things are going to look at a certain point in time or in a certain frame of our animation. What I'm doing right now is grabbing this red rectangle here, which is referred to as our playhead, okay? And what I'm doing is just scrubbing through a number of the frames that we have in our movie. Whenever we see these arrows here with the blue background, that's gonna tell us that there's some sort of animation happening there, okay? So as I'm scrubbing back and forth here, you'll see that we have a layer in the timeline called title, and that's where the title is fading in and moving up. I have lots and lots of layers for all these different balls or, or circles, if you will, where they're all animating in in a staggered fashion. Again, I'm gonna focus a lot on showing you how to create animations. I'm gonna explain in detail frames, keyframes, how to add frames, manipulate frame spans of animations, and we're gonna spend a lot of time in the timeline as we move forward. But for now, I just wanna show you that it's basically where all the magic of our animation happens. All these little black circles that you see here represent what we call keyframes, all right, or key points in our animation. And you'll see that this text sort of fades in and comes up from the bottom. If I want that text to come in from the top, I can go back to the first frame, keyframe of that animation, select that text that's invisible right now, and I can use my transform tool to move it up here. Now the next time I play this animation, you'll see that the text starts at the top and moves down, all right? So I can edit the position, scale, or rotation, or alpha of any of these elements as long as I'm adjusting a keyframe. But again, I'm gonna show you all of the ins and outs of working with the timeline and creating animations. I wanna bring your attention now back to the properties panel, which is where we're going to see different properties of whatever we have selected, okay? Um, the last time I clicked on anything really was on the stage, so we're seeing properties of the stage. If I click on Herman, the properties panel is now telling me that I have a graphic selected and it's giving me the X and Y position as well as the width and height. If I click on a frame in the timeline, the properties panel is going to change to show me properties of that frame. All right, we can put a label on a frame, we can adjust the easing, but I just wanna point out that the properties panel is contextual and it gives us a lot of information about whatever it is that we have selected. So if I click on the pasteboard or the stage, I get the stage properties, I can get symbol properties, or I can get frame properties, okay? So that's why it's really important, or it's one of the essential panels. We always wanna have it accessible so that we can see information and change it about the things that we've clicked on. The last thing I want to show you is the library. So right next to the properties panel, we have the library. And the library is where we're going to store symbols, which are assets that we're going to be reusing throughout our animation, okay? You'll notice that for this document, I have three symbols. I have one green circle. I have this guy, Herman, who has a symbol in his name of Snorkel right now. And we have a title, okay? Now what's cool about symbols is that they can be reused multiple times in our documents. And if I edit a symbol, all instances of that symbol in my movie are going to be updated. So let's just say that an art director says, hey, you know what? I want you guys to sell blue circles now or something else. Well, I can double click on the circle to edit it. And let me just show you really quick. I'm gonna take that green fill and I'm gonna change it over to a nice light blue. And then now, when I go back to scene one, look what happens in my animation. Every instance of that circle is now blue. So yeah, I'd wanna change green to blue here in the text, but it's incredibly powerful how symbols work. And we're gonna have a whole deep lesson on creating symbols, editing them, swapping them, and we're gonna go through the works, all right? But I just wanna show you that the library is where we hold all the symbols, or if you will, characters that we're going to be using throughout our animation. So as long as you have your workspace set up to essentials, you're gonna have easy access to the tools I'm going to be using, the stage, the timeline, library, and properties. There are a number of tools here and panels that we'll go through, such as our color mixer, our color swatches. But again, we got a big road ahead of us, and I'm gonna get into all of these when it's time. 
I'm gonna really wanna focus though on getting you guys up and running with animation. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the three types of animation we'll be building, and we're gonna get you into building some animations on your own. Normal animation.